now that we have our church's baseline page set up, now we're ready to put in services into this page so that we can submit both creating the church plus the, the services that are associated with that church. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing that we need to do is to go into our church model and we need to tell Rails that our church is um, expecting when it is updated to have those services connected to it. And so the, the way we do that is accepts nested attributes for and then you tell the model that you're going to expect that and so for us it is services and that will just tell Rails that hey n not only are you going to update a church model but you may have one or more service models that are also going to be part of setting the church and, and you need to um, be able to handle that appropriately. So once we've done that we can go ahead and put our um, fields in the view. So let's edit our church's field and we could put those in, in here, but I think of the service elements as being part of the church field. So I am going to actually go to the fields partial and put them in there. Now, we could just go uh, like this and do something like text field for our, our service and um, that would be something like uh, day of week or something like that. But there's no way, if, if this is what we have, for Rails to be different, able to differentiate this element as being part of the service as opposed to being part of the top level church. And also, there's no way for us to be able to, to list more than one day of the week for more than one service. So Rails has a, a mechanism in, in, built in when you're trying to create fields for a nested object. And that looks like uh, this fields for, and it should remind you a lot of form for, which we used to be able to create this form in the first place. Uh, so we're going to create our, our fields for our services model. And um, we could do, say, form, but that gets a little confusing because this isn't the whole form, it's only part of the form. We've already got F uh, for our form in, in here. Uh, we could do something like subform. I think that would make a lot of sense, but if you look for help on the web, you don't see that very often. Most of the time, what you see on the web is the um, variable called builder. So I'm just going to stick with that even though it's it's not necessarily my favorite uh, name for it for that variable. So um, we need to end that fields for and now we are going to make a text field and we'll do the the same type of thing we did up here but now instead of making it for our form we're making it for our uh, subform, the builder for our services and we want to do the same type of thing as above. We're going to create a label for the day of week and we keep going for all of the different attributes in our service which are things like uh, start time and we need to make the text field for that and the finish time and takes a little second sorry about that but I want you to be able to see that everything in here is, is exactly what we have put into our services models and then finally of course is our location attribute and so we put that in here and 
we now have created our fields to, to be able to do our services. So let's go and see what that looks like in our um, web page. So if we reload the web page here, we see it's kind of hard to see off the line, but this is our day of week, our start time, our finish time. Um, day of week, start time, finish time, and location. Or actually, this is picture. I'm stuttering here. Um, this is a picture, day of week, start time, finish time, and location. Um, obviously, we'd want to style this better and make it easier for us to be able to understand it, but that would be a, a separate video. Right now, we're just trying to get the functionality in place. So um, we can uh, go ahead and try to um, submit this, but uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. Um, and so this is an example. Search um, junk field uh, Sunday nine o'clock to eleven o'clock, and let's do main and first. And we can now submit this. And right now, the profile page for the church doesn't display the services, so we don't know if that worked or not. So w what I'm going to do is go down here and um, run the console so that we can look at that. So if we do uh, the, what the last church that was added, we can see our example church there. And if we go to services, we can see that it's empty. So we have not added that service like we wanted to. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, although we put these services in here, we didn't tell Rails to accept it. If we go and edit our church controller, you'll remember that our church parameters rejected anything other than the church name, website, description, and picture. And that includes all of these service um, elements. So let's go ahead and update this uh, to include the, the services. And the, the way that we're going to do this is we don't just go on here and put day of week and so forth because we need to say that that's part of our our services nested attributes. And the way, the way that we do that is we say that we have attributes for our services. So we're going to go like this. And um, we're going to list all the attributes that are going to be nested inside of this service. So that would be things like day of week, and let's get this lined up, and start time. And finish time and our location. So now if we do that and go down here, quit out of here, keep our server running and try to create a, a new church right again where we, we fill out that same information uh, again when we do that, we have a new church. So let's go and see what happens here. If we go back into the Rails console and, <coughs> excuse me, look and, and see what we have. So we have C equals church.last. And if we go C.services, we still have it blank. And uh, this could be very confusing. Um, and so I'm going to stop the video here so it doesn't get too long and pick up from here 
why this is not working even though it looks like we have all the parts in place. 